On um, March 11, 2011, uh, the Tohoku earthquake struck Japan, uh, where I was stationed at the time. The earthquake triggered a tsunami which ended up killing thousands of Japanese. Uh, it was devastating to the eastern coast of Japan, and it also triggered uh, something you might have heard, the, the Fukushima nuclear disaster. That particular event uh, caused a release of particulate which essentially on a nuclear-powered aircraft carrier, which I was on, it is a bad thing. It set all our detectors high. It made it impossible for us to read anything but this radiation that was essentially following on us. And that, in turn, made the admirals in charge of the fleet decide that the carrier needed to leave port in very short notice. Now, normally, our carrier was prepared to leave port on a four-day notice. And that's for, you know, cruising around, getting to somewhere in the Pacific Ocean that needs help. But at the time, we were going through a period of maintenance, so one of our reactors was actually torn apart, uh, a process that takes months. We essentially, in that four-day period, had to put things back together enough for the ship to be able to sail out of the harbor of Yokosuka and basically clear the mainland so that we could get far enough away from the source that we could have our detectors operating safely. The trouble with that, of course, is it's a massive job. Thousands of people uh, and we ended up working pretty much for four days constantly in terms of just the sheer manpower needed to get things put back together just to run so that we could sail out it was very very difficult in that regard uh, but there were other things associated with it that made it a little bit even more challenging uh, we were not prepared supply wise uh, to sail out with any number of people on the ship so any sort of food that we had was very limited I recall for that month period we were at sea a few days there were what they called uh, cheese enchiladas on the mess decks, but they were essentially a tortilla shell with a slice of American signal in it, and that was what you had for lunch. It was not a great time in that regard, it was very challenging, and there was also the understanding that there was this great amount of suffering that was going on the mainland. Uh, I think the entire terms of 10,000 people or so died in Japan because of the actual tsunami. The sort of helplessness you get with being on something like a carrier and knowing that you have the ability to assist in those situations, but we couldn't because we were essentially uh, very limited on propulsion. We didn't have our, any of our air crew or we didn't have any helicopters or things like that. So there was really nothing we could do besides cruise around in the water and wait. So in terms of a bad situation, I, I think that would count up there as probably the top of my entire career. It's just that sense of thinking that you can do more and not being able to, which really sticks with you. Uh, it's definitely one of those things that I always keep in mind when you know you feel like you're in a bad situation. It's one thing to be doing homework at two in the morning and you have a test the next day or something like that. It's a completely another to be working around the clock because you need to get your carrier out of port to escape nuclear fallout and understanding that you know, there's this giant disaster happening around you.